righteous caliphs. So the, the four righteous caliphs are uh, Abu Bakr and uh, Omar and Uthman and Ali. And the reason they're called four righteous caliphs is because they were elected. So this is the, uh, the, the only time, and then comes a very important election that was going to bring a whole lot of trouble. And that's caliph number three, uh, Uthman. Uthman is a Sufian too, just like Omar is. However, as we will learn from Ali's letters, Uthman uh, was a later conversion. In fact, Ali later claimed that, that he converted to Islam only uh, out of political expedience, of convenience, something that there was nothing else to do uh, except, except uh, to follow Islam when everybody else did. Uh, anyway, what uh, Ottman started doing is appointing his friends and relatives to positions of power, governors of Syria and governors of Egypt and of uh, Iran, the Persian land. The most important for the future uh, conflict was the appointment of his son, whose name was Muawiya, uh, to be the governor of Syria. Uh, Muawiya moves to Damascus and establishes himself over there as the governor of Syria. Uh, basically, uh, um, Ottoman is, uh, he begins to introduce new things that were not there in the first period. It's like more luxury, beautiful clothes, more refined tastes, you know, settling in uh, in, in nice residences, which is of course very different from tradition of Muhammad and Abu Bakr, which is very simple. Uh, Muhammad sometimes slept on the floor uh, in the tent and never was interested. He was interested in perfume actually, but not in good clothes. So uh, the, the, the biggest importance is that the appointment of friends and relatives uh, by a to the positions of power rather than competition uh, based on uh, loyalty and uh, uh, competence in your profession. Uh, and finally, in 644, he's killed. And this time, he's killed by a Muslim. And that has to do with discontent that is beginning to spread uh, in the Arabia and uh, further out, uh, and one has to explain who is discontented and why. Well, the people that are discontent are those people who believe that Ali should have been elected. And why is because they felt that the, this is, uh, uh, that he was much closer to Muhammad. If you follow that principle, people who are close to Muhammad, Abu Bakr, yes, Omar, yes, but certainly not Ottoman. He, he was not really a friend. Uh, moreover, he was actually on the other side in the, in the battles of 1820s, 620s. Uh, he was with the Sufians, he was with Meccans. So it was not, they felt it's unfair. The next person logically for them was Ali, who, who was with Muhammad at all these uh, tumultuous times. Also, they had, uh, they began to have their own ideas about Islam, and that would also be the beginning of very many currents and trends and interpretations in Islam that would be quite rocky and explosive at times. Uh, so they would be known later as Karijis, uh, and uh, very briefly, one could explain who they are by saying they're more radical Islam, they're more revolutionary Islam, and they are basically questioning the authority of caliph if they believe that that it's wrong. So in other words, it's, it's a kind of idea that Islam is higher than the caliph. And that idea actually is in Islam. In fact, fatwa is higher than the caliph. Fatwa by the ummah, by the religious community, can remove uh, a, a caliph from power. And just for you, for your information, two Moroccan sultans were removed by fatwa, by the religious community, removed from power, which is proof that a religious fatwa is more powerful than the power of the ruler, uh, sultan, there was no sultan in those days, than the caliph. So, so they basically say, we disagree and we don't like it. Uh, and then there was a rebellion uh, in, um, in Egypt, uh, and then there was re rebellion growing up in uh, uh, in Basra, in, in southern Iraq, 
Uh, and these people were basically uh, demanding uh, that uh, Othman be removed, and finally they killed him. Uh, when they killed him, the Ummah assembled one more time, and uh, finally they did elect Ali. So, Caliph number four, the last of the righteous Caliphs, is uh, Ali. Now, Ali had a very, very difficult reign. Uh, he ruled from uh, 656 to 661, so it's like five years. Uh, and in the end, he was killed too. So, very briefly, uh, we will read Ali's letters, so we will discuss it more. But basically, Ali's problem uh, were three problems. Uh, Muawiya, problem number one, the governor of Syria. Aisha, uh, problem number two. Uh, and uh, Kariji's problem number three. So he had very, very difficult political problems. And it starts with Aisha, actually. Uh, Aisha does begin to demand the same thing, actually, that Muawiya did, but for different reasons. He basically, she says that uh, the death of Ottoman has to be avenged. Now, wait a second, I would say to Aisha, that's not what Muhammad taught. Muhammad was against the blood feud and taking revenge. Uh, somebody of your clan dies, you have to revenge the other clan. So, in a sense, she's saying, pretty much as, as Ottoman, I mean, as Muawiyah would, that revenge should be, uh, should be a part of Islamic practice. Ali does not want that. In that sense, Ali is more Muslim and more of a follower of Muhammad says, no, I am not going to do the blood uh, feud. Now, should they be found? Yes, they should be found, the guilty ones. Uh, but only because they're guilty, but not on the basis of some kind of a blood feud or revenge. Now, the real reason, and I believe with those historians uh, who argue that the real reason that Aisha doesn't like Ali is because of the incident that happened many, many, many years before when uh, Aisha uh, dropped a shoe in a, in a, on the procession of, of caravan and she stopped uh, and there was a, a young warrior who stopped with her and helped her find the shoe and then they, for some time, they were alone and came to, uh, to, the, to wherever they were going uh, uh, alone. And uh, this was supposed to be uh, disrespectful, and uh, Ali was the one who brought it to, to Muhammad, that issue, and Muhammad said, uh, a wife of, a, uh, of mine is beyond any suspicion. So he cleared her without any investigation of the issue, but basically it was something that could be considered a little improper, uh, a married woman to spend some time with uh, a warrior who is accompanying the caravan. Uh, obviously, Aisha didn't like it, and she probably kept the grudge against Ali, and now that Ali becomes a uh, caliph, uh, she actually leads uh, a rebellion against Ali. Uh, and the people who are in this rebellion, this is the sad part for Islam and for the friends of Muhammad, the people who are with her are the closest of the closest. Zubair, for example, and many, many others, whom Ali mentions in his letters that you guys will read. Uh, and it was a battle of the camel. So this is called the battle of the camel. And it takes place led by Aisha. Aisha herself is on the camel leading the troops against Ali. And there's, they're, they're killed one after another. And, and, and then at the end, she's a, sort of pretty much alone. Uh, but he's a gentleman. He, he does not kill her. Uh, she's, uh, she's saved. She's, she's forgiven. Uh, and she basically is left to live in Basra uh, uh, for the rest of her life. So she led a rebellion and he did not kill her, even though it was a battlefield and many, many, many people around her were killed, but she was not. So he crushes Aisha's rebellion, the Battle of the Camel, and now he has to confront his most serious challenge, which is Moavia. Moavia is very, very clever. Is a very skillful politician. His base is in Damascus. He lives in Damascus. He's a governor of Syria. <laughs> and he refuses to step down. Uh, Muhammad, I'm, I'm sorry, Ali says uh, that is in what, within my power as Caliph to replace you. 
Well, Muawiya says, no, I'm not going to. Moreover, you, he accuses Ali of being guilty in the death of uh, uh, Othman. Uh, and of course, Ali isn't. Uh, and then Muawiya writes him letters, again, we should read those, where he accuses him of covering up and not making enough effort to find the murderers of Othman. Uh, Ali responds that uh, he, he would like to, but it's impossible to find the guilty ones, and he would not uh, kill people just because they belong to another clan. Uh, and this correspondence goes on and on, but basically it has to be decided in battle. And this is the next battle that Ali has to face against the Muslims, and this he, he dislikes it very much. The Battle of the Sifin is called, and it is in Syria, and uh, the two armies actually meet. But here again, Muawiya employs a very clever trick, uh, which, which really uh, saved him. The, in the battle, Ali's army was winning. Uh, uh, and then Ali, uh, there was a pause for the night before resumption of the battle, and Muawiya uh, created this uh, new uh, trick. He asked his soldiers to put the pages uh, from Quran on their uh, on their sabers and to go to battle with those sabers and pages of Quran up in the air. When Ali's uh, force saw this, they refused to fight. They didn't want to fight uh, people who are caring in the name of Quran, uh, and and the battle ended in in. In essentially there was no battle, there was no battle. Uh, and, and that means that Muawiyah won, because uh, he could not be deposed. So Ali again sought a peaceful solution, uh, and uh, he asked for arbitration. He asked the court, which means the elders of the Ummah, to decide uh, who is has the right to be a caliph. Uh, now that in itself was a a politically a suicidal move for him because people who supported him uh, and they were lots of those people uh, who were also included Karijis uh, because Karijis actually thought that he is the righteous caliph, he is the follower of Muhammad uh, and they were supporting him against Othman and they actually were the ones who killed Othman. Now he completely lost their respect by making a compromise with Muawiya after he had been legitimately elected, after the rebellion of Muawiya by refusing to step down, uh, how could he possibly submit it to arbitration? There's nothing to arbitrate. He is a caliph, period. That's it. Uh, and so they were very, very upset with him uh, and he had a growing rebellion behind his back uh, from the Karijis. But he did go to the arbitration, and the arbitration court could not decide anything, as the American Supreme Court could never decide anything. So who is supposed to be uh, the caliph? The court basically ruled that both are eligible, uh, that, that one could be and the other could be. Uh, well, kind of, that's not quite fair, because there's already one that was elected, which is Ali, and Muawiyah wasn't. But by ruling that both could be, it sort of left the issue unresolved. And as a result, uh, both of them went to their place of power. Uh, Muawiyah went to Syria, and uh, Ali is very important. He does not stay in Arabia. He moves to the place where there are more people who support him, which is Basra and the new town of Kufa, which is on the Tigris River. So you have a kind of a shift of a radical uh, supporters of Ali. It's very important for the future of Islam and the, for the future of Shia movement. It's already at the time of Ali that geographically these people are concentrated towards Basra uh, and actually Arabia becomes kind of nobodies. You have Damascus, Syria, the center of Muawiya, and Basra and Kufa, the center of those who support Ali. Well, finally, in 656, uh, one of the Karijis stabs uh, Muawiya, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ali. Uh, they actually attacked Muawiya too, uh, and uh, General Amr, but uh, the three of them who were involved in the arbitration. But the, the one who actually died was Ali. Uh, Muawiya was wounded, and he uh, actually remained uh, uh, incapacitated. Uh, 
uh, he was impotent for the rest of his life after his attack, uh, but he survived, he lived, and he had already a son, and he reigned for another 20 years. Uh, Ali uh, was dead, uh, and um, uh, Muawiyah proclaimed himself caliph. And since the court ruled that he was eligible, uh, it was kind of accepted that the next caliph would be uh, Muawiyah, but that would be no more elections. This was uh, a caliph who seized power and then passed it on to his children, and this is the end of the four righteous caliphs.